Hello again, there's some atmosphere building up here. We're a few minutes away from uh, kickoff now, and Kenny, this really, really makes you want to put in front of the club. I mean, you've done it so many times before, but there's something special about this place, isn't there? Well, obviously, they're privileged to be here, but it's much better to ride on the pitch than in the stand watching again. The atmosphere is unbelievable, and I think uh, it's amazing how two clubs can be synonymous with the same song. And there's a great relationship between the fans as well, as we're about to find out. There's Jerry Martin, the man who made uh, You'll Never Walk Alone famous, with a probably forgotten many of course. And he's about to leave 60,000 people there, Liverpool and Celtic alike, in the version of uh, You'll Never Walk Alone. Ah. Oh, Jerry, what do you think of this?
Duncan O'Neill continually and mystically linked with Liverpool makes two significant changes from the weekend win over Rangers last in his back five weeks after breaking his jaw Chris Sutton moves deeper Lambert goes to the bench after his bruising old firm Derby Jamie Smith comes in for Didier Gatti for the hamstring Smith surprisingly getting more hard at Momo Silla uh, Chris Sutton has passed the test on a groin strain Larson the only survivor from the 97 games against Liverpool Rats well Martin O'Neill will play his familiar 3-5-2 position three very strong physical defenders in the Albi, Baldi and Bulgarian Surprise changes in the midfield five. Jamie Smith will play on the right in place of the injured Gat. Neil Lennon in front of the back three alone. Petrov and Chris Sutton in particular to support the physical presence of John Hartson and the craft and scoring prowess of Henrik Larson. Gerard Houllier's raised eyebrows and Samson for a meeting. He rejected the chance to manage Celtic in 1998. Makes one change from one of the Bolton. Petsky recovers from his hamstring strain. Lisa drops the bench. Seven of that side won the 2001 UEFA Cup. Liverpool have never lost the two legs European side against the Scottish side Ray, but fans I've spoken to do think they're going to be out muscled here. It's going to be a very difficult game, and I think uh, if you look at Liverpool and the lineup we've got this evening, and particularly at the back, Jimmy Triori's in for the injured stepping on, so he's going to be vital in the partnership with Danny Hoopia. Four across the midfield. Uh, Dioff will play wide on the right, the man sitting alone, Gerard and Murphy to get forward. I don't think it's going to be an orthodox front too, Jonathan. I think Emil Heskey, who is fit and plays this evening, will play maybe in a wide left position, leaving Michael Owen up front on his own. The fourth battle of Britain, individual dogfights everywhere. Will Church, you do it, ramble his defenders in time, but that was an expected aerial bombardment. No step at all show, of course. John Harson, Chris Sutton, Henrik Larson. What a powerful trio. The referee tonight is Sergio Hauga, one of UEFA's brightest and youngest officials, a 37-year-old health officer from Norway. And Celtic, of course, in the green-white hoop. Get a soften underway, kicking from left to right in this first half. And immediately looking for Sutton to head on to Harson. And Harson gets the shot away! What a start from Celtic, absolutely first class from shoulder and tent here this evening. Ball from Alan Thompson up, Chris Sutton gets above Jimmy Priori, drops for John Hart and hits it first time on the volley. Jersey Sudek well beaten, and of course he just goes over the top and hits it the crossbar. Fantastic start from Celtic. Scored for Wales against Sammy Huppy of Finland this season, has 23 goals for Celtic this campaign. Sutton's netted 17. Last on 34 in 35 games, he's scored in 16 of his 17 home matches this campaign. Missing out just the once against Livingston when he broke his jaw five weeks ago. And this is up here. Now, Mount Yelby, look for Hartson again. Up here behind it. Gerard away. Yelby. Mark Michael Owen on a couple of occasions for Sweden has Mjolby and has not conceded a goal against it. Traore, well, so much pressure's going to be on him tonight, I think, right? Yeah, nice at night for Jimmy Traore. Turn along, take Tammy Uka. Great experience that Hoopy has got as a young man playing there and he's up against the physical presence of John Arthur. I'm sure the gets much balls into John as it possibly can this evening. There he is again. Thompson. Jonathan, they've hit the bar after what 40 seconds or so to find the same one goal up. And all it is, it's been 
put in the back lane of Liverpool under enormous pressure from the first whistle. Well, when they met five and a half years ago, it was a starting opening for Liverpool. Michael Owen scored in six minutes. Now the boot is very much on the other foot because of that one. Well, what Liverpool must do now, Jonathan, is not panic. They've got to go all behind very early in this match. They've got to try and take this thing out of the game now. Just get the ball down, try and get, make some passes and get the ball into the Celtic end of the pitch. It's all right. Murphy on. That was Sylvia Petrov. The Thompson, strong challenge on him by Gerrard and Liverpool are going to need him. And his strongest and most rugged in there. Carragher looks for Owen and he's deflecting off Sutton and that's an early opportunity as well for Danny Murphy didn't quite catch it right Carson again what a handful he's going to be for Hoopy all night long two Liverpool survivors from the 97 98 clashes Michael Owen is the other Palmer very nearly caught by Larson they are so agitated Liverpool Hartson oh up here the ground Hartson goal kick only the referee checks his assistant to see if Jeffy do get got a touch I think I'm on fire isn't he John Hartson got the winner against Rangers at the weekend and he's bang on for them at the moment, just back. Danny Hoopier, like he is in there, gets the strike away. There's too much elevation already, you can just see two or three yards over the bar, but another fantastic effort from John Hartson. I well, think Hartson believes he didn't get the respect owed him in the English game. People talked about his physicality too much and not his goal scoring record, which was as far short of one every other game for West Ham, Wimbledon and Coventry. He was uh, put a boy in Arsenal for having signed from Luton some eight years ago now. Murphy now uh, has to Canada. Thompson meets him. Hammer. Has to have made a run and got in behind. Are they? It wasn't found. Celtic picks an attacking team. They know they need to build a big first leg advantage and if you are Celtic fans they'll say well even a two or three goal advantage for us to be thrown away has been thrown away in the past and in a big parcel here 3-1 in Champions League qualifying earlier this season and lost to his third leg and went out the point that well as you mentioned there they conceded the goal at home that's what it's been ever for to do this evening a clean sheet and I'm sure Martin O'Neill will be delighted. Looking for a club record. Tenth European home win on the spin, Celtic. Strong challenge by Baldak. Now Thompson with the gifted left foot. Juice is a good pass from Sutton on that occasion. Never been on the winning side against him. SK. Two strong, powerful athletes there, shoulder to shoulder. Not necessary for a well, from Bobo Balder because Emil Hesse wasn't going anywhere, he was just trying to protect the ball. He just uh, tried to nip in front of Emil there to, to win the ball and Emil showed his strength and in the end gave away a throw and when you've got Toronto Rito on the ball you know you're going to get good delivery into the box. So chance here for Liverpool, 1-0 down. Rito with it. Owen and Juve round about the penalty spot, Hesky there as well, and Hoopier of course going forward, scored in all that. Murphy on the edge of the box, Carragher's in there too, Hannan and Gerrard just holding a little bit deeper. Risa looking for Hesky, and that's a good claim by Rab Douglas in the Celtic goal. And see Ronnie Simpson, one of the Lisbon Lions, was praising him in the papers up here, saying he has the ability now to go on and become one of Europe's top goalkeepers, such as uh, 31 next month Carragher Shoot 
Good wording in cup finals and well against Bolton. He's lucky there. He'll be up. This is a nervous start by the Liverpool defence. It certainly is. They weren't trying to hit the ball the ball there. He hasn't got that many options ahead of him. You know, the midfield players are coming short. The Celtic midfield five really are closing them down extremely quickly. So there's no real room to find anyone. And up front you've got Heskey and Owen. They've been marked by three Celtic defenders. That's so all Liverpool have succeeded in the UEFA Cup. This time by the 26 so called Battle of Britain between top English and Scottish clubs. English have 18 victories and 25 thus far. Brandon Strike. This is Smith. That makes Tony Murphy out of the deflection. Not too quickly with the throw. Could be a stick to cross having seen the danger. Yalby. Two decks to it coming. 16 sheets in his 10 matches, since returning to the side up until tonight. The beaten in the second minute tonight here at Celtic Park. Four. And he's due to Carragher. There are, going to be moving the ball quickly, that's a good run by Murphy. And he's there with him. They played together at uh, Crew Alexander for a short while. Murphy was the youngster. And that by Petrov. Gerard did well, just shepherding him out on the far side. Killian Petrov. Mielby in the air. Beaten by Hesky. Owen. Scored in his last four games, Michael Owen. He's never had a five-game scoring spree, though. And to the change the strikers. You've got 826 minutes to see how the league goal is worth the spell. Big one is back. And there's the golden boy again, Michael Owen, back to Liverpool. I think he's a player that uh, the Celtic defenders fear the most because he's got that blistering pace again behind them. You know, they're very physical, the, the back three of Belgium goal. You know, they're the most mobile of defenders and I think that's an area that Liverpool will try and expose. But they need to get that in forward because if you look at them at the moment, El Hajduk is playing wide, right? But they're playing very narrow in the midfield three with Gerard Haman and Murphy and they haven't got any real width down this left-hand side. They're asking John Arno Rita to push himself forward a lot more and trying to supply the crosses for the likes of Eddie and Owen. Dudek looks for Heskey against Fowler. Gerard. And again. And as he's made a teammate under pressure, so he just opened up a little bit of an angle, made himself available and finds El Hadschu to take on Christoph Ehrman. Belgian international concedes the throw in. Now Carragher. Hammer, space. Murphy to his left hand side. And the try by Danny Murphy, but he was closed out by young Jamie Smith. Scottish international now, having played against the Republic of Ireland recently. And he started 15 matches for uh, Celtic, Jamie Smith. 22 years of age. The Aldi is just climbing on Heskey. Trying to get you to send us your comments tonight. Text the word five, followed by your opinion, to 81125. Lisa with the free kick. I think it'll be for Liverpool. Again, he's got Hesky on the edge of the penalty area there, and juice behind him. Gerard finding a little bit of space. And Hupia. Hesky. Too much pace on the flip. Yalby. Last in the goal score. Smith Stampers. Larson, passing to his left, just cut out by Corey. 
but it was a, a stretch and it was a last bit stretch at that. Cover at the pace for Jim Smith down this right hand side. Get past the Liverpool defenders like they were now. First it was John Arnie Reeser, then he slipped the ball into Henrik Hartson. I just thought he caught John Hartson on the He didn't quite read it, Hartson. Uh, but then the end of his Fiore, he just got that stuck in a bow to one as well. The Scottish football that Celtic continue their run. If they enable Scottish clubs to move up the European coefficient table, it means that the Scottish club won't have to pre qualify for the Champions League. They're close to that situation. Petrov, Smith. Crucial for Liverpool, of course, to keep their silverware coming into Anfield on the back of the Worthington success and I still feel a bit of disappointment that we still have on the league championship. And you were doing a new race for cut. I wonder where they've been going. Finish in the top four and get back in the Champions League. There's no mean season that, is it? Well, it's not bad, but what the Liverpool fans want, want more than anything, Jonathan, is that French status. Uh, you know, the last three seasons they've finished fourth, third and second and they were hoping this was going to be the year to wrestle it away from the likes of Manchester United and Arsenal, but it hasn't worked in their favour so far. Troy. Marshall Searle separates the sun. Quickly timed at 105 seconds. behind it, Larson, Larson turning away from Hamar, certainly the sharp of this coherence is Carson strong challenge on him by Thora, I think Thora is a better centre half than he is a left back where his distribution is letting down some of the ball, he doesn't have to get involved as much as the centre back, he just did it nice and simply, but I find it very very strange there, he's a left footy player playing on the right hand side of the, the two sets of defenders. That's Murphy. It was Carragher in and Owen just stepped over it, so the ball to come to Danny Murphy. The chance, wasn't it? Carragher with the ball in, I think it was Michael Owen just letting it run to Danny Murphy. Just got underneath the ball and just scoops it over the bar. Ten goals he's got this season from midfield. Scottish international goalkeeper Rab Douglas will clear. He's done something of a regular now for Scotland, despite uh, picking up that injury at the start of this year. Hartson off. Just leant down on, leaving himself up on Hammer. Yeah, Hammer is there, he's done well, he's up there, and he's gone just to mention from behind him there, gone Hartson, and just caught him, and the referee's in a very good position to see the, the ball and give the free kick to Liverpool. Reeser, that's misjudged by Smith. And Reese is still. Heskey, chance for Liverpool. Heskey, 1 1. And it initially came due to a misjudgment of the flight of the ball by young Jamie Smith. And Reese stepped inside and found Heskey. And it's all square at Parkett. Positive run when it was from John Arno Reese. Two weeks back from the down the wing on his left foot. So we can see quickly, just tucked inside Neil Lennon. And then he threads a lovely weighted pass to Emil Heskey on his weaker left foot he strikes across Rap Douglas in the Celtic goal and he absolutely had no chance whatsoever here the two injury doubts have both met it Larson who's had the broken jaw and Heskey has had the hamstring injury brought back by Gerard Houllier today and it was a good decision six cup finals in five years he's played Emil Heskey tremendous tremendous criticism but but the problem is, uh, when you're a striker, you're always expected to score goals, and when you don't, you're always criticised. I think that's one of the, the problems for Emil. But people forget about the, the work he does off the ball. Uh, he, he does uh, so much for Mike alone, and he's the one that uh, reaps the benefit of scoring the goal. But uh, tonight, uh, it's nice to, to see him that he is on the score sheet. Back, fifth and well. That's good news for Liverpool and for England. Good finish, and he's set up goal in his own city. Gerard. 
Ricci. Suddenly Celtic are rocking. Paraga. Juice onside. Cut back at him there by Chris Van Houten. Well, that's just causing problems on that right hand side because Alan Thompson doesn't know where to pick him up or go out to Jimmy Carragher. And equally, Valhiren isn't picking anyone up. He's uh, the free man at the back. Yeah, he should be speaking to Alan Thompson. Says, Don't worry, I'll go out there and cover you any opportunity. He goes out to El and I'll be the first one to go and compete against him. It is his 30th season in Europe. 40 seasons in Europe for Celtic. What experience. The first time they've been in European competition though beyond Christmas for 23 years. Oh, well he was lucky Gerard. Risa, Murphy wants it there, played in behind Murphy. Lennon, Petrov. Thompson wants it on the left hand side. missing a little space on the right hand touch line and with your picture down below the bottom of your picture you'll get it now though and look at the slowest spot that he was in space how much was he to blame uh, for the goal going his mission not to point the finger at a young man Ray but he seemed to misjudge the ball the front of the ball well he did well if you look at uh, where the ball dropped he was still telling by right. 40 yards out from the Celtic ball just two defending after that you know he's coming for Arne Reef to beat uh, Neil Lennon quite easily and then none of the centre half are picking up MLS he left them free a threaded ball through to him and Emil did the rest you know just down the bottom corner of the Celtic net and the initial error but Luckily compounded. Thompson, super cross for the goal in its range at the weekend. This is the wing back. They've got the opportunity for that great of width from Liverpool have had all season. That's been a criticism of your former team. They tell me, as he'll have to do, uh, gives the, the width on the right, it's on this left hand side where we see Danny Murphy is playing on the left. He doesn't like coming wide, you know, he wants to play more on the central role. But from terraces that John Arne Rita gets forward from that left back row and, and off with the width and on every occasion for Liverpool. Didi Harman for Liverpool. To Heskey there, goal score, nice layoff. El Hadjou, Smith covered back. A turn for his error. Good work by the young winger. Playing right wing back. This is Owen. Thompson made the challenge. There's a problem for Celtic with three uh, central defenders. We don't know really who's picking up who. They're getting caught in so many positions that they shouldn't be in, allowing uh, the front two of Liverpool you know, to get good opportunities to either get shot at all or put other midfield players in. Thompson for Celtic. So close to Liverpool emotionally over the years, but a lot of their fans still feel aggrieved with the Cup Winners' Cup semi-final got away in 65-66 and Bobby Lennox seemed to have a, a good goal disallowed at Anfield for offside late on by a Belgian referee who admitted two weeks later he'd made a ghastly error the goal would have taken Celtic through and they would have made the final at Hamden Celtic very concerned at the moment with uh, the fitness of Alan Thompson They're recalling Steve Guppy from behind the goal it looks as though Alan Thompson has finished the game just from the far side it was uh, when, he, when he got back and covered on Michael Owen with the challenge immediately turned and grimaced he's been looking at the moment though he doesn't really look like he's any real pain at the moment does he Jonathan he's moving quite freely uh, and I think the extraordinary thing at the moment is that uh, he has had trouble down there, but as I said earlier, Joke is, is getting in behind him and maybe 
uh, that has been seen as a problem for him. And Duffy will come in and play on that left hand side. Oh, it's the Carragher. He's now on the left hand side. He's just wondering in here now. He's going to come back centre. That's all in the good touch. All day right. Six minutes for Celtic. Movement from Larson, all right by Hepburn. Liverpool have calmed down. They were almost blown away in the opening couple of minutes here. Hartson flipped the bar in the opening 15 seconds. And Larson had scored. By the time some people were still taking their seats. Kupia. Steve Duffy's going to come on for Celtic any moment now and uh, Andy Thompson's part of the game is about to end and I'm looking to make an adapt for the uh, JS Insurance Cup final against Rangers on Sunday and the game you can see live on five Has 
YouTube. Execution, but he saw two out there. Well, yeah. play inside the defender. Once again, feel for it there, isn't it? Danny Murphy has got the quality to see that type of a pass. Looking for the run of Duke, who has got the beating. He had to beat the Thompson earlier, and I think he will have to beat the Ducky as well. You said it before, right? Why does he keep coming in? He's coming in again now. He's in the centre circle out of shoot at the moment. Well, when you're defending Johnson, you want him and you want that nice and narrow midfield. But when you've got the ball, you need width. You want to get plenty of space to pass the ball around. Yeah, I'll be on it. After he gives it, so it's away for the most by Michael Owen. Paul Lambert on the uh, Celtic bench. Two robustious challenges on him in the Old Firm derby at the weekend. And Celtic are in such a massive period of matches. Ranged again on Sunday, Liverpool return leg, and then it's Inverness Tally in the... Uh, Scottish cut. This is Smith. Deflected off Lisa. Sutton. Smith couldn't control it. Chris Sutton in his deeper role has had an effective part of Celtic's uh, part to play in Celtic's season. I remember he played that away at Blackburn. He was excellent that night, mm. but uh, in the last 15, 20 minutes or so, you know, Liverpool really have bossed the midfield areas. They're playing. 3v3 in there, and at the moment, Haman, Gerrard, and Murphy in particular have got uh, the better of the Celtic three. Top sides have come here in recent seasons in Europe Santa Vigo, Blackburn, Porto, Juventus, and all have gone home with their third between their legs. Liverpool only Celtic 1 1 recent. Went away from Mjelvic. Aldo stepped across. Well in tumble, nothing given. Good decision. Larson. Lovely, isn't it? Larson's work came to nothing. Celtic. 
59,700 here tonight. 3,000 are full-time Liverpool supporters. Many Celtic fans, of course, love their Liverpool as well. Got to be careful at the moment, John, because a few of the Celtic players are getting on the back of young Jamie Smith. That's not going to help him. You know, he's not having a particularly good time at the moment, but uh, equally having a go at him all the time, that's not going to help his confidence. Liverpool goal is clearly unsettled here. Hartson beaten in the air by Traore. Settled after it. And it is a very shaky start. Gerard, out battle. Catch up. Chuppy away from the left hand side. Larson being joined by Hartson. Strong challenge again by Carragher. Now Jew has to make his mind up. Just took on too long over the, the pass in the MLS. He made the run. You have to play earlier into the space. Smith to Larson. And in front of her Piat. Sutton. Hartson awaits on the right hand touch line. Sutton. Hammond's behind it. It's back up the line. Hartson's there. Smith as well. Balde has pulled for it. And then made a run to open up a gap to Balde. Valhera. Steve Guppy. The body pass to Larson. Guppy again. Hartson. Down the header. Good run in there by Valhera. Offside, I think. Yeah. I just thought John Hartson there, you know, was going to bring it down. I really did think he was just going to try and get it on his chest here. And just see, good build up playing from Celtic. You can see the ball when it came in from Hartson. Hartson was offside. Cross from Steve Duffy. Shouldn't have been caught offside though, though. John Hartson should have been looking across the line, making sure that he was in an onside position. That's a sort of same setup for, for the, for the uh, old firm goal against Rangers when Thompson crossed and Sutton headed on and Hartson finished. problems you know when they were going through that dodgy spell coincide with the fact that he was out definitely uh, i agree with you 100 there he just puts that shield on doesn't he on the front of the back door and it lowers the length of Stephen gerard and danny murphy to get forward and supply the passes that's required for you know your, your front player to take games for somebody to probably wear it Carragher. and thereabouts in the first half. Owen's done it. I think Liverpool, I think Liverpool will be very impressed or they'll eventually be very impressed with the way they've, they've come back. Smith. Now they're away. And very quickly on Jamie Smith back there as well. Looking very nervous at the moment, isn't he? He's really getting deeper and deeper. And that's not uh, where he's at, at his best. He's very good indeed at running at defenders and then he's got to get some crosses into the box. Gerard. Duke in space. Carragher was an equal on the right touch line. He may get it now. Murphy to Hesky. Duke Carragher makes that forward spurt. Eventually comes to it. Well, had it. So that's a slow go fired by Celtic. A lot of football has been played in their half of the field. Liverpool have constantly found space. But apart from the, the goal, Emma Heskey scored. Well, we haven't had many chances, John, but I think that's what we're doing at the moment, just retaining possession of the football, just keeping it in midfield, uh, happy to take, put up to the, the front two of Heskey and Owen, and then they'll just you know, pass it back into the midfield area, just keeping possession. Now 
the middle court. Heskey making a power drive through the middle. Well, no one was there with it. Too much heat on the ball there from Danny Murphy. He needs to really drive that through. There's an awful lot of space between the defence of Celtic and the, the goal of Rob well, Douglas. Petrov. Yeah, not a good pass. It in. Murphy from Gerrard. And in Jamie Smith. Here he is again. And he wants to wiggle forward with the ball. Got pace. With room for the confidence. And at the time of the uh, CIS insurance semi-final against Dundee United uh, they were talking about him playing for Scotland Hartson's flick on Corey under pressure Hippier, Gerard. talking of the CIS Insurance Cup the final Sunday live and exclusive on 5 on air 2.45 kick off between Celtic and Rangers at 3 have won it 12 times and 11 old firm um, derbies in that competition Rangers do have the edge Hartson
Liverpool are fast and they're about keeping possession. But it cannot get the tie. Another the scrap of its neck. They can't dominate, they need it's a couple of goal cushion because Liverpool have the crucial away strike. for uh, Gerard Houllier, French youth level. And is it uh, Metz? Gerard. Eski. Liverpool have played it at an even pace for the last, what, 35 minutes. See, the retaining position, well, Liverpool, but know they need a runner. When they're playing the ball around and then they're looking for a set-up to midfield, but know they need the runner. And at the moment, they're not getting that. to Guppy, one of Leicester teammates. Guppy into space. Carragher impeded him. One minute of stoppage time on top. Mario gave away the free kick. But furious, he's screaming at Chelsea do that there. In a line here. Petrov with a free kick for Chelsea. Started the first half in blistering fashion. Can they finish it in similar way? They look for Sutton. Hufio was climbing the higher. Reeson muscled up it by Balder. Larson far post. Traore somewhere. Shoot. Oh, he was a little bit unfortunate. The first touch was precise. He couldn't keep his footing. Traore again it. That's two quality balls that Chelsea could put in there and both the Liverpool centre half have stood from first. Here is Sammy Hoopier with the header there and the ball came in. Jimmy Triori, the, the back post, getting an all-important flip just in front of Henrik Larsson. Found that. Pieces and Murphy's there and Owens made the forward spurt. Baldo with the cover. And is it that end where Michael Owens scored in the first six minutes here when the two sides last met at Parkhead and Newey pick up? And this is first in Europe. One tonight, of course, is in the club record. Remarkable home scoring run. Just a hundred odd seconds into his return. Henry Larson put Celtic head. Emil Heskey though on 16 minutes tied it up. 1-1 intriguing stuff at Parkhead. Coming up the thoughts of John Aldrich, Kenny Dalglish, Pat Nevin and more from Ray Houghton here. And of course, a blistering second half we hope. 1-1. Would he, wouldn't he play? Well, he did. And it took Henrik Larson four minutes to make his mark. Another man who was touch and go tonight was Emil Heskey. He made it and only scored two. So there it is from Celtic Park. Celtic one, Liverpool one. Liverpool, of course, with that away goal. And uh, we talked a lot about uh, Henry Larson before the game, didn't we, and Kenny? And um, what was that, eh? I think it's a very tough stuff for him. Eh? Come back in four minutes, he scored the goal. I mean, but that's the kind of man he has. He's so important to Celtic, it's so influential. And just his very presence there makes him uh, useful for Celtic. He chips on their goal, that's an added huge bonus for, for Martin Hart. And the way go for Liverpool. That's Very what cool. they wanted, and then they've just held it since then, haven't they? I think you showed an awful lot of character after the first five, six, seven minutes, you know. Celtic came out unbelievably so out the blocks, and uh, Liverpool were probably lucky to be just 1 0 down. But as soon as they got a grip on the game, and I must say, Stevie Gerrard has been very influential on doing so. Uh, uh, they've looked the strongest side. Right, let's do your text now. Thanks for sending them all in, by the way. Uh, Dave Glynn from Cheadle says, uh, Larson, Hearts and Sutton, best strike force in Britain by none. Kenny, have Celtic had, uh, ever had a better forward line? Well, I'm not sure about that, but they've done all right tonight. They certainly started like fireworks, didn't they? Yeah, well, the three of them in any combination uh, are very exciting and difficult to prevent. Uh, this is right from the kickoff. Thompson fights it up, starting knocks it down. I tell you, John Harson's really unlucky there. That's a great effort and great technique. 
this is him again, Harrison hunting it, takes it off him, Sutton breaks forward, the man's got to win it back, comes back to Harrison, Big Sandy goes to ground a bit easy, but that's a tremendous strike for Harrison, he started uh, really quickly, and this is a goal, Petrov pings it in, um, Arno Risa missed times his jump, and John Harrison knocks it back, Cara's just a wee bit underneath it, good volley across the goal, and there he is, Hans Christian Anderson knocks in the back of the net. <laughs> Mick Farrell from London says, uh, that's it, away goal in the bag, soak it up at the back and leave it to big uh, Emil and Michael the Magician. I don't know about that. <laughs> I wouldn't want to soak any more pressure like the first six or seven minutes. Uh, but now Liverpool have got to look to, to, to get forward and perhaps get another goal. Danny Murphy's uh, uh, first real effort from Liverpool point of view there. Easy for the goalkeeper to deal with. Jamie Carragher gets involved there, and again it comes to Danny, tries to bend it, unfortunately got it underneath it, went over the bar. This is the goal, good ball by Triori, who's played well. Great surge and run by John Arnaris, it really does, work, does well. Pulls the defence apart, slips the ball through, got a deflection off Lennon, but that's a great finish from uh, Amy Lesky. That's where you want your strikers to, to hit it on target, across the face of the goal, and uh, great finish. Shows he's, he's got a lot of confidence at this moment in time. Sarah Spencer from the world. Uh, they used to call him Bobo the Clown, uh, but uh, for me he's become Celtic's unsung hero. Pat's in our analysis area. Yeah, well I don't think he's a clown anymore and I certainly think he's getting better every single game he plays for Celtic and uh, certainly today I think he's an outstanding game today. Um, first of all what we see is, uh, well he's big enough to shape up Jamie Oheskew, who's a big lad himself. But all the way through, his reading of the game has got better and better and better all the way through. He's a very, very strong lad and uh, he's made his presence felt in the first few seconds there. But you know, he's not dived in there, he's in the box, he's closed Hesky down and he's strong enough to get in there. Big Baldi's going to have to be strong all the way through for the next uh, three quarters of the game, might be the next half and the, the two halves to come. But he's done very well and you get Michael on there, he's not given him a chance to get ahead of steam up. And, uh, well, we all know about his power. If you put the ball up in the air, there's no chance anyone's going to get by him. But this is him reading it quite well. And uh, he's read it well, and he's, he's looking up, and he's trying to pick a pass out as well. But I think this was his best bit of play, right near the end, and that's the sort of stuff that Owen usually does well. Gets the ball, passes out nicely. I think he's a great start. Well, we've had a lot of text tonight from you about Celtic and how they've performed down the left-hand side. I think we'll give that one to Jonathan and Ray. Yes, Steve, we were talking about beforehand uh, that uh, the left foot of, uh, of Thompson will be absolutely crucial and uh, it's the way it proved early on, Ray. He certainly was. I think he was very influential in the first five, ten minutes for, for Celtic. This, this is the goal here. John Arson does very well at the back post. Puts it across the face of the goal. Alan Thompson fires it in here. But just look at the reaction of Henrik Larson. But this is the other side, the poor side of Celtic and Alan Thompson. Look how deep he is here. He's less effective in these areas, and that was down to good pressure uh, from the Celtic players. This is a, from Liverpool players. This was the challenge, I think, that caused the injury to Alan Thompson, and he had to go off. And then Guppy came on. Will he be as effective in the second half? I wonder, and give uh, some strength to Celtic down that left-hand side, where they did look very dangerous early on, Steve. Thanks, boys. Well, we can join John Helm now, who's talking to a man who entertained us before the game. I wonder if he's been entertained by the football. Jerry, have you been entertained? Oh, yes, John, but panicking slightly. I think what, what, what's happening, we're losing width, and uh, the vision is going up for me. Uh, not for me, but on the, the, the players, we need vision. It was a torrid start, wasn't it? Yes, it was, and uh, I thought we could actually do something, but then suddenly it changed. I think Celtic are playing great, and we're just, we need width. I, I really do, I think so. And a bit of vision. Thanks, John. Well, I think we could do with him up here in the studio, couldn't we? It's 1-1 at Celtic Park, second half next. 1-1 at Celtic Park, Liverpool are on the pitch, Celtic aren't yet. Of course, it's better for Liverpool as things stand at the moment. Kenny, can you see it just staying like that, or do you expect more goals? I think it may be another one goal somewhere. Um, I certainly hope so. Liverpool are in control of the game now. Celtic after a great start. Uh, I'm second best at the moment, but I'm sure there'll be 45 minutes here to get through. But they can still win again. Uh, John, do you think that um, Celtic are playing well when they haven't got the ball, if you know what I mean? Do they know what to do when Liverpool have this possession? I think when we Liverpool are knocking the ball about, to find the gaps far too easy. Uh, Man and Neil, that, that would give them a major problem. Uh, I think Liverpool really have to start this half a lot. They've got to say a lot better than they did the first half. Get on the ball and, uh, and pack it. Yes, Stevie Gerrard's on the ball and uh, he's made a difference to me. Okay, John, thank you very much indeed. Uh, time for us to return. Uh, 
to Jonathan and Ray. Jonathan, you first. Thanks very much, Steve. No changes for the two teams as they emerge in the second half. Liverpool all in red will be kicking from left to right. Mama uh, Silla was called in to the dressing room. Could tell his uh, warm up at half time. We thought he might be coming on, but no. Henrik Larsson only failed to score here once this season. Emil Heskey, whose scoring feats have not been as successful, but tonight has played a vital role for Liverpool. Ray, are you surprised there were no changes at half time? No, I wasn't. Uh, I think both teams have uh, you know, played very well indeed in that first half. You know, Celtic started the brighter, got that early early lead but certainly after that Liverpool were uh, came into the game more and more Duke gives it away Cuppy clears Traore now Harman Gerard. Amy Smith who stayed on and the confirmation of the Celtic team Mialdi, Balde and Valkeren are back three and Liverpool Team confirmed for the second half as it was for the first. Roman Heskey up front. And the atmosphere builds again. The noise crashes off the precipitous two tiered stands. Two of them having a laugh as they come out Martin O'Neill and Gerard Houllier. Believe everything you read, Martin O'Neill will be the next Liverpool manager and Gerard Houllier was going to be the Celtic manager at one stage. Believe everything you read in the paper. Hartson, is he pushed by Huffier? Recently. Murphy looked for Owen. Gerard again in space. Two. One has come short for the ball. And it was well anticipated by Chris Sutton. No one's won it back. Here's Carragher. Gerard. Curious route the ball took then into the penalty area. I don't know whether it deflected. I think it did, John. If you look how deep the back line of Celtic, ah, oh, you know, Bobo Bobo was ahead of that, inside his own penalty box. You know, that's how much Liverpool are pushing the Celtic team backwards. Have you been surprised how much space Gerard has, and Harman as well? They've always seemed to have got four or five yards of space to play in. Well, if you look at the midfield three of Celtic, you know, they, they're playing a little bit deeper at the moment. I think there's a little bit of fear there at the moment that when they're picking the ball up, the, the Liverpool three, they're looking for that ball over the top all the time. Heskey and Smith. Oh, I took a, a sort of swing at him. Now in it. Smith, if he can get forward and get at Risa, then the ball could have problems. Just to throw in. Doesn't look like he's got a trick though, does he? When he's got uh, Risa there, he's fronting him up, and if he hasn't got the room to push it right past him and use his pace to get the cross in, he hasn't got the ability to do a trick and, and, and beat him with a bit of skill and get across in. Wins another throw in. The game for Martin O'Neill and Celtic. So, uh, they, they've not got anything to prove to uh, clubs in England, having beaten Blackburn and having had such a, a terrific run in this competition this season. Sutton goes for a 1-2. Ooh, now, where did that hit Risa? And was that a push by Torre on Hartson? No, referee was right there again. Sergio Hauger, the health officer from Norway, says no penalty kick, twice, Owen at the other end, all by himself in the penalty area, and that's good defending, stood up, Balde, sound defending by him. Knew exactly what Michael Owen wanted to do there, didn't he? Wanted to get it on his right foot, Balde was strong, made sure he went that side of the goal. And then just got the tackle, an excellent challenge from Bobo Boulder. Petrov, looks for Larson. Behind him was Guppin, he gave him the shout, and Duke covers back. Rather oh, stumbly bumbly. Now, why is this a penalty kick? 
handball? Certainly wasn't a handball, no, not for me, Jonathan. I don't think it was. This was more of an interesting one. No, you can just see there that John Arts has thrown himself virtually to the ground and give the referee credit. Very much on top of it there, made the right decision. Two good decisions by the ref. It's a poor corner by Petrov. The first man, Harman, cleared it. I might get a better chance here. No. Not been greatly effective, has he, the Bulgarian? No, he hasn't. No, I think he's been second best in that midfield area. Certainly the Liverpool have dominated in the midfield for the last 30 minutes or so. And that's such an important part of Celtic's game, set plays. When you look at the like of Valharan, Balder, Mialdi, Hartson and Sutton, there's five really tall players coming up and you put good delivery in there, they're going to win most of the header. So, Gerard was looking for Owen. Now Gerard gets the ball, Owen's off, he's looking to make a run. Like a shotgun pass from a, a quarterback. Gerard has that ability. So he could do with a little bit of help there. He really get it, but he found Petrov, who was being pulled by Heskett. Advantage to salt it, they're allowed to play on. Listen to the roar now as Hartson closes on Reset. 57,000 Celtic voices disagree with the referee there. Duke. Murphy's run. Well, they make contact. He was always going to be second best for the ball in the air. Did make contact. Words between the two of them. Good play from Danny Murphy. That's what you want from your central midfield player. Getting beyond your strike and make that extra man. And then the inbounder had to come across and throw him into dangerous position. Also, good quality from Risa here, and they could be in trouble. He's been a mark of Liverpool over the years, as uh, the man sitting alongside me would know. Quality midfield players getting beyond the strikers to score goals. Ray did, Terry McDermott did. Risa's cross. Oh, came off Baldet. Owen's boot flew off. Smith up to Larson. Hold it up. My first instinct there, Jonathan, was bolder hand bolder. I would like to see that one again, but fairly as if the header was flipped on, I thought it caught Baldy on the hand. He hit a hand, I think, in there. Bacharin's touch. Guppy. Four ball by Nana because Gerard was there and he's had a massive influence on the game, Gerard. He always wants the ball, doesn't he? Kind of a good player, Jonathan, isn't it? And he's never made. Juve played Tory in all sorts of problems. This is Larson from Hartson. Henrik Larson! Good save, Yatsi Dudek. Fantastic save from Dick Jersey Dudek. He's kept Liverpool in the game here because from that position you would fancy Henrik Larson nine times out of ten. have been 36 goals in 36 games this season 193 in 242 games for the club look at the near post now Larson beyond Saturn Hartson was there Traore away that was a, a very important header because Hartson was steaming it up can Risa win this one well he, he got in front of Valheron the touch as he stretched out too much weight this is the chance Jonathan good ball from John Hartson, first touch from Henrik's very good, but good goalkeeping from Dudek came out very quickly indeed, spread himself, made it difficult for Henrik Larson to get the ball up and over the top of him. You can see the reaction of Martin O'Neill there. He expected his striker to put that one into the back of the net. Yarbit. This is Bobo Balde. Into the handball against him at the other end moments ago. We'll try and show you that. Let's see now. It's a good ball in. You can just see the offer that's going up with the header. Gets a flick on it, and there's the arm, certainly of Google Bald in. It was going goalwards there, and I've seen them definitely given against 
It's a great spot where no penalty appeal by a Liverpool player. Not one of them. I think he's so quick the header, uh, and his hand is up quick and down quickly. I don't think any of the Liverpool players seen it. Skewed, can't be away. Alan to Gerrard, Murphy. The Sutton is down for Celtic. Flash on the back of the head. Martin O'Neill. Oh, he actually ran into Danny Murphy there. Danny Murphy knew nothing about that. His eyes were firmly fixed on the ball there, and Chris Sutton just ran into him. His birthday week this week. Chris Sutton turned 30. John Helms with the Liverpool bench. John. Yeah, Jonathan, I've just seen it first-hand, the calming influence of Gerard Houllier here. After that lapse, which really let Henrik Larsson in a moment or two ago, Phil Thompson and Sammy Lee were very agitated, leapt to their feet into the technical area. The UEFA official twice has had to tell Phil Thompson to retreat and to calm down. And Gerard Houllier was the one who said, calm down, boys, calm down, boys. It's one apiece, we're in the game. Everything's OK out there. Mark Waller was the other man you saw there in that shot, the doctor of the uh, club for Sutton. There's uh, uh, John Clark in there with the silver hair, the man who played uh, in the 1966 game at Anfield. In fact, the ball deflected off him and into the uh, back of the Celtic net for one of the goals. Strong on the tie uh, for uh, Liverpool, scored the second goal. Tommy Smith deflected in off uh, John Clark. And he finished the ball just on the Anfield iron. Before my time. <laughs> oh, it looks for Esky. Juice. <laughs> still. Recovered by Guppy. He's come on just on this right hand side. He? He's looked very positive this evening. I think he knows he's got the beating in the first half of Thompson. And certainly, since Guppy's came on, he's gone past him on numerous occasions. He just has to get quality into the box once he gets down the flank. That's such a good one, he looked his neck, doesn't he? He's still got the uh, muscle manipulator there. Brian Scott, the uh, physiotherapist. Lisa with the corner. Hartson with the clearance. 1-1, one, Larson for Celtic. The opening couple of moment, minutes, Husky leveling on 16. Outlet there by Balde. or no penalty, he's been a minutes for Celtic at the back foul day. Gerard Owen turned into the challenge by Valhera now Larson Murphy chasing Larson trying to gain yards really, there's nothing else he could do there's nothing really on for him and that's the point there Jonathan, no support where's the midfield, you know they're so far away from the front two players, there's a massive gap between the midfield of Celtic and the strikers. Murphy, a little snap, a little dig at him. Gerard, Teresa. Liverpool have controlled the opening 30 minutes of the second half. Must be tumbled theatrically, referee waving play on. Esky. Peter Duke, Stingray time. Anything can happen in the next half hour, I think. You never quite know, dear. No, I don't think he knows either. That's the most important thing. He's very elusive, though. When he's on form, he's very difficult to, to mark. I mean, looking at Henrik Larsson, you know, I wonder how long he can last. You know, the, there has to be question marks about his fitness. Because he's not really played any competitive games. I've been watching him and he's been puffing and blowing a little bit and maybe just start to feel the pace of this game. Almost on the hour then. Once again Risa. Look here, going forward. It'll drop to Murphy. He looks on the edge of the six yard area. Hook is still there. Hammer. Gerald is to his right. No whip on the right hand side again. Shoveling it through the middle. Sutton to Larson. Duffy. Something with a bit of pressure from Duke. Now 
picks up. Smith has acres of space on the right. Mialbi presumably will give it to him now. Jamie Smith the step over. Has he dwelt a little bit too long? Well, he's got beyond Reese and he's done well. For a minute there, I thought he dawdled a little bit too long, Ray, but he did terrifically well in the end to get beyond his man and get a good crossing. Well, that's when he's at his best. When he's got a little bit of room to manoeuvre, he can push it past. Usually, fish, you see here, tricks to go inside, just pushes it past both her man and Reese, clips at the back post, and Duff does extremely well, doesn't he, there? Just held off Steve Duffy and cleared the ball out of the box. Well, Sammy Lee and Phil Thompson won't be pleased with John and Reese, though, because he seemed just to drift past him too easily. This is. Henrik Larsson in the box for Celtic. Smith, low across, Cora. Reese away. Owen. Eski to Carragher. Juf. Murphy. There's a bit of a lunging challenge by Valhalla. Melby eventually tidies things up. Hartson, Larson offside, offside. That was tight, Jonathan, very tight indeed. I thought he tightened his run well there. John Hartson with the flick, we can just see here as he goes to flick a well. No, he's not, Zinchy's in it, but great decision from the assistant referee. Backing uh, Mr. Herger up, also from Loyola Herman Horgan. Dudek away, Yarby won it. Powerful, positive header. Leonard, Petrov. Smith again wants it on the right hand side. Sutton. Gerard looks for Jew. Heskey's in the middle. Owen far side of the penalty area. Looks for Heskey here. Great move though, wasn't it? It really was in sight of play from Liverpool. Steven Gerard was at the heart of it. They look at this for a pass from Gerard. Tail has Duff down this right hand side. Lovely first time ball in. But I'll tell you what, Rab Douglas does extremely well because if he doesn't come off his line as quickly as this, Emil Heskey, I think, has got an easy tap into the goal. But give the keeper credit. Came out quickly and put Heskey off. Do you agree with what Ronnie Simpson's been saying in the uh, press up here, Ray, about uh, Rob Douglas, that he could become, or well, now needs to go on and prove himself as one of Europe's top? Well, he's played uh, extremely well this evening. I don't think he had much of a chance with the strike from Emil Heskey early on, but everything else that he's done in the game has been very good indeed. His handling has been first class. Jude, Gerard, Alde, and Heskey over the top. Curious header away by Bobo Ball. It was almost ankle height. Six foot three, just under the 14 stone mark. Well, he didn't head it in a way about three inches above the turf. He looks taller than that, and a lot, a lot stronger as well, doesn't he? He looks a real man mountain. Galvi to his compatriot Larson. Traore away. Herbia. Petrov. It's deflected back off Eskin. Nearly came to Hartson, and that's a superb clearance by Traore. First class from Jimmy Traore. He needed a touch here, he really did. John Hartson looks like he's in. Just seen left foot coming across the face of Hartson there, and that was a, a vital touch as he put it behind for a corner. Match balls. Could be his best game in a Liverpool shirt, Jimmy Troy. I think he's had a terrific night. Really, when you consider the physical pressure, uh, presence of Hartson and Sutton in there at Baldy, they're in there again. Gerard away. I'll take him, Petrov. 
stoppage. Tim of Carragher, Larson awaited, Traore stolen again. That was a difference there, isn't it? Eric Larson waiting, Traore's acted on it, he was first to the ball. Puts the ball away from the Liverpool goal. Valde with the drive, Murphy blocked. Treble winner in 2001 with Celtic, the Belgian. Answered. Oh, to do a pick -up. I've heard it once more. Duffy. Did well to control the pass like that at pace to Lennon and Hartson and Sutton. And Smith has lots of space here. Acres of it. Look for Hearts and hook it away. Wasn't a quality pass. Gets a second chance to run it. Risa, poke it. Fans are not happy with that. Harley Jonathan, there's a chance there for Jamie Smith. Just to deliver it into the box. You've got Hearts up there. Sutton's in there. Just picked the wrong option on that occasion. Try to run at John Arnie Risa, but his touch wasn't the best. And I'm sure you know, Martin O'Neill trying to inspire his players at the moment. It's a critical time in the game. Someone's got to take control for Celtic. They're not passing the ball around as quickly as I'm sure Martin O'Neill would like. And all. Liverpool fans would rejoice in a score like this and celebrate. That Celtic went to Stuttgart. Scared the pants off them early on. Went to the before losing on the night. They won the tie. And they won at Blackburn. Gerard and on to Owen it's not the same sort of night we had here in 97-98 into Hoopier off the ball just fell over nothing in it whatsoever over 20 minutes to go the jeers of the Celtic fans tell the story there into a bit of a lull. Balde to Hartson. Smith. Only Larson on the edge of the penalty. That's direct. Beyond Larson. We've been looking at Chris Sutton, you know, he's not been moving particularly well. We just look at the inside of his right leg. He looks like there was some sort of a you know, plaster or something on there. I don't know exactly what's, what's wrong with him at the moment. But Growing problem in the build up to the game. Pass fit to play. There was no one in the middle there for the cross. There was no Sutton, there was no Hartson. I'll tell you why there. You can just see it there. He's got some sort of pass or something on his knee. Right knee there, John. Maybe he's got some sort of problem. Juke. We 
Anderson, Murphy's making the run through the middle. Back to Heskey. Baman. Hit the referee, and the move broke down on that, but I don't really think it was going anywhere anyway. No, they're just keeping possession of the ball there. I think we're happy enough the way things are going at the moment, because Celtic going forward aren't really a threat at the moment, are they? I can't remember in this half where Jersey Dudek has had to make too many saves. Just the one chance for Henrik Larsson when he came out extremely well and, and blocked it. Such a huge period of games for Celtic, as we've said. The CIS Insurance Cup final coming up live and exclusive on five this Sunday. Celtic Rangers on air at 2.45, kickoff at 3 o'clock. Rangers, of course, will have the extra days to prepare. Hearts, of course, went off. It was a poor ball, may have bubbled, but it wasn't a good ball. Pesky style. The yellow card came out, or is about to come out. Confirmation. The definite free kick here and yellow card. Emil Hesse just let the ball run and Stillian Petrov, you know, was committed to the tackle. He's gone in for it, you can see. Gerard Julio there, just trying to raise his players there, saying, come on, you know, we can get even more out of this game, just more belief in us here. Push up from the back, get the midfield a little bit further forward to support the front two, and there could be another goal in the game for them. Gerard. Was foul. I saw the early on in the evening, you know, that the Scottish media and a lot of the Scottish fans were saying if Celtic win this, they can really prove a point. They would be good enough to live with the Premiership Elite. But on the other hand, if Liverpool can get a win up here, the, uh, the boot would be on the other foot. And it would be a terrific step forward for Liverpool, I think. At the moment, not beautifully poised yeah, in the second leg. Gerard. Remind me of it. Reset. Gerard for Liverpool. by Gerard, just cut out by Valhara. Juve driving forward, looks for Arne again. Valde just stepped across. What a good clearance. Carrigo to Gerard. Last five minutes so they got very ragged indeed, haven't they? The balls from the back to the forward haven't been quite good enough, you know, there have been more in hope, really, in truth, Jonathan, rather than trying to put precise passes to give them the opportunity to break forward and take some of the pressure off the back players at the moment. They spent a lot of time in the game chasing, chasing the ball, Liverpool have passed it around, especially first half, we've got a 20-minute period. Time for Celtic changes, perhaps. Bench, Lambert, Maloney, Brainy, McNamara, Silla's there as well. 
Murphy. Larson's looked across to the bench. I think he's seen that he's about to be replaced. Heskey looks for Owen. Chance here for Michael Owen and the European record for Liverpool. No! Well, surely it's a corner. Well, it's got to be. It has to be a corner there. Even Rab Douglas thought it was a corner. I think I believe it, Rab Douglas. He's actually made a decent save there, hasn't he? You know, it was a fabulous ball from Emil Heskey to find Michael Owen's first touch is good. The only thing wrong with it there, he should have went across the keeper, Rab Douglas. Hits it in the near post. Certainly looked like Douglas put his fingertips to it. And we're just looking at Henrik Larson. I think he's feeling the pace. And he made the right decision to bring him off. Well, he's done his work this evening, actually. This is his goal in the first couple of minutes. Ball that was spreaded across there from Alan Thompson. Hits, it comes off his thigh there, but goes between the legs of Jersey Dudek. And what a start to the match he was. And welcome back, Henrik Larson. Numbers come on. Martin Sutton now, of course, up front uh, for Celtic. Risa has time. Smith for Celtic. Liverpool would certainly be the more pleased of the two. Petrov. Him just behind. There he is. We had real success at international level. He was saying this week, Lambert, that Smith's cross. Guppy arrives to defending by the aware El Hatchu. He's done that twice in the game. I think he'll be delighted. Not renowned for his defensive capabilities, be that twice at the, the far post. He's got timely intervention for Liverpool. No, did play with one? Which one will he pick? He's off the clock, the ref, he's going to kick the ball anyway. Should be a corner kick. Should be a corner kick. Uh, I think Celtic have been denied a flag kick. Well, Heron with the throw, looking for Hartson. Traore climbed the higher. Gerrard away. Petrov. Very quickly closed again by Gerard to deny him a shooting opportunity, but Liverpool defending deep here. Mialbi into the box, but be away. Can they spring onto a counter? Hama, Murphy. The counter attack has gone, but Carragher to Owen. As they maintain possession here, Liverpool. Murphy. Heskey. To me, that looked like a tired pass by Emil Heskey. He's had his hand in from him. Gerard has caught. I don't know what the problem is there because quite simply Stephen Gerrard was just too quick and here he just nicks it away from him. And it was with the arm I think more than anything that he caught uh, Stephen Gerrard there and I think uh, Neil Lennon thought in the end that it was a dive from Stephen Gerrard but since it wasn't that. Heskey all over, opened up by Baldo. Now Smith, can you motor forward for Celtic here? Murphy got back at him, Reese has still got work to do. Smith was hounding in. Now to please Martin O'Neill, the persistence of the young man. And then into the Albi. Poor touch was made by Valhara. So right there again work as he put in tonight by the way. Saturn. And what we're trying to find Smith, I remember a win performance by Jimmy Johnson here against Leeds in a European Cup semi-final many a moon ago. Against uh, Terry Cooper, I think it was, and the Leeds finished with nothing that year. Wonderful mesmeric of it, wasn't it? Oh, incredible thing, there, wasn't it? This is where the advantage is for Celtic, where I really do believe this. I think you can get the, the right delivery in there, they certainly have got the height to overpower Liverpool. 11 minutes to go, Guppy with the free kick. Good punch by Dudek. Just looking caught there, Dudek, actually, by Mialbi. 
He's holding his, uh, sort of rotating his right arm in pain, but this is John Arnorisha. Oh, well, that's got to be a yellow card. It's cynical, it really is. But Steve Duffy knew John Arnorisha had the pace of him there. He was away. You can just see her straight away. Just let him look down at his legs. He knows he's gone. Did a deliberate little flick of his leg there. And Risa wasn't happy because he knew there was a possibility we might go on in the box there to get that second goal for Liverpool. So all they have is a free kick in rather a deep position. This is never quite done in those uh, circumstances. Ty very might delicately balanced and Michael the tie. Murphy looks for Jude. Duffy got in there. Lennon. Sutton. Sutton is calling for it from the corner of the penalty area. It's on the square. Lambert. Smith. Again to Lambert. Hope here scuffles across. It's caught. That's a free kick for Liverpool. Good defending that from Sammy Hope. He read the situation extremely well. Left his man there, Chris Sutton, because he's seen the run of Paul Lambert. Knew exactly what he had to do there. That was getting across in front of Lambert. Get to the ball first. And in the end, Lambert had to go. Great defender. to go then. Mialbi. Swedish international. Balde. Fearsome sight. And the Buccaneers forward. Then into Petrov. Celtic, European champions of course in 1967 Lisbon Lions was up to final three years later Liverpool four times kings of Europe three times they've won this competition Owen Liverpool are working so hard all over the park and then Elad's good I haven't seen him work back track back with players get in good defensive positions as much in a game before. And we've still seen enough quality from him there, Ray. Well, £10 million. Pounds. Well, not the £10 million pounds, Jonathan Allen, but uh, I think the, the more that he plays, the, the better he is becoming. Um, but you've got to remember, this is an away game. You know, they're happy to sit back at times and defend. They don't have to get forward as often as they would normally in a home game. They've got to think, you know, he certainly has uh, had a decent game this Carragher for Liverpool. Charles Hulia made a sound point about you earlier on this week when he said he only had to play his club football last season and the African Nations Cup. They got the final and the World Cup for campaign with Senegal. Murphy from Pesky. Murphy again. The chip was aimed at Michael Owen, but Herring got it away. Was he pushed there or did he flop forward? He played for it, didn't he, Deep Mahaman? He knew exactly what he was doing here. And to see him, he's driving at the heart of that Celtic defence. Just takes a touch. And he's just fallen over Valharan's leg there, isn't he? A clever play from a man because he knew he was going nowhere. And this is a very interesting position for Liverpool. You've got Don Arno Racer, who's got tremendous strength his left foot. And then you've got the guile and crowd of Danny Murphy, who's seen in plenty of occasions from this sort of an area curling into the top corner Murphy stands to the left Hamad's 
turn of the ball. John Ruiz is going to have a long, long run up for Liverpool. Six goals this season. He's never lost when he scored Liverpool. Four men in the Celtic wall. The Norwegian referee is not happy they're back the full distance. He's going to take his time here and he's saying, do not move forward, do not encroach. Duke is in that wall. Huppi is there as well. Smith wants to break forward and run at the free kick taker. The gap has opened up in the wall. Lisa Stone in his run. Comes again. Charged out. Strong enough to knock three Celtic bodies over. And nothing came of it. Great defending, though, though. It really was. That's what you want from your wall. And stand firm. Make sure that the ball doesn't get beyond you here. Probably just overhits it slightly there, her man. But look at that. I think it's still in picture of the ball finally comes off. But he was determined that that shot wasn't on to go past him. Martin O'Neill took commitment out there, wasn't it, the way they charged down on the free kick? Gerard to Risa. Five minutes to play. 1-1. One, one. Hopia. First half was bright and breezy after the whirlwind start by Celtic ahead in two minutes. They also hit the bar in the first 20 seconds of play. The second half had more mistakes and uh, there's been more fought coming up after the football tonight the Channel 5 film The Fly 2 starring Eric Stoltz on it Calder Carragher one another pressure from Sutton Chris Sutton to me is not fully fit mm -hmm. and, uh, and certainly had the last run out of puck. Yeah, and Alan Thompson had to go off the injury as well and I think they've missed his quality from this left-hand side. That's not been disrespectful to Steve Duffy but Thompson's been in fine form for Celtic in recent weeks. You can see there Chris Sutton in the wards once again and he's not moving at all well at the moment and was a massive game against Rangers in the CIS Cup of the weekend. And surprise and if he finishes this match. Maloney is on the uh, bench. Yet come on, this is Carragher. Juf. Carragher to Juf. surprised if UEFA for reacted as well. Well, they should as well, because well, we want to eradicate that from football. We can hear the Celtic fans once again berating El Hajduk every time he gets the ball, and rightly so, because that is the, one of the worst things as a football world I think we can do. Murphy to Owen. Owen falls in the penalty, and Miyabi was stronger. Now, no doubt, El Hajduk will claim provocation in there. I hope uh, he wasn't taunted in any way, or abused in any way. Certainly, Gerard Houllier will want to know if that happened, if there was any abusive uh, 
El Hashouk when he fell, in, fell into the crowd. But uh, as a result of it, there was agitation in the crowd and uh, one or two of them came out of their seats. And that is unseemly. And that will be a worry and a cause for concern for that man. Well, what we've seen there, Jonathan, they were just a little bit of pulling around, wasn't it? They were just slapped them on the head. I don't think there was any animosity towards them. That's just what they were there, but he reacted the wrong way. Well, I've heard that uh, also I'm getting messages as Balde heads wide that uh, one supporter was so inflamed that he needed a policeman to uh, put him back in his seat. And, uh, well, that is a terrible shame because it's been a... It's been a terrific night up here. The second half has him in great quality and El Hashou is being substituted. And you're going to hear more of this. Fish can's coming off. And that was a disgrace. I think it's very really going good. I think uh, Gerard really has done the right thing. He realises that he's getting an awful lot of stick from the Celtic fans and it's been played in a great atmosphere this evening. And as I said, you know, we've said before the game, the scenes that we've seen was first class and straight away they've, they've taken our way out the bar and line, taken straight to the, the changing rooms and that's good management from the likes of Phil Thompson and Gerard Julia. Whatever the provocation, if there was provocation, where you simply can't have it. No, you don't do that. That is the, the lowest the low, Jonathan, spitting the people. Eskin wasn't in play, the assistant referee was in line of right there. That has inflamed the situation here. Can't have that either. This is Owen. What a shame because the whole night has been played in a, a splendid spirit. Both sets of players and both sets of fans as well. There's a great respect between both sets of fans, and it's been undone this evening. Well, you you played in the in the, in the uh, 89 game, didn't you? I did indeed. It was a fantastic occasion. Our first game back after the Hillsborough disaster. And uh, the Celtic fans took it to the hearts that, that day and uh, the, there's been a great rapport between both sets of fans since then but uh, you know when you have a player spitting at fans it, we just can't have it, it's an absolute disgrace What a terrible shot Guppy with a free kick for Celtic Deep in stoppage time here now Hartson with Huppy on his shoulder was so firm there he's been so strong all night but Murphy and Liverpool can counter here the referee's final whistle stops him in his tracks and it finishes 1-1 at Celtic Park a hug for Gerard Houllier by Martin O'Neill and that's the sort of respect that we expected throughout the night but didn't get ultimately after Larson had scored for Celtic in the opening two minutes Emil Heskey levelled it up on 60. The exchange of shirts between two massive men, Balde and, uh, and Emil Heskey. And it goes back to Anfield for the return leg. Will Owen decide it? Will someone from Lennon Celtic? It's very, very tight. Very, very well balanced. It finishes here at Celtic Park. Celtic 1, Liverpool 1. So it finished uh, one apiece, all to play for at Anfield, but you have to say uh, it's advantage Liverpool. Right, straight down to the tunnel, and we can hear from Martin O'Neill. <coughs> Martin, you couldn't have wished for a better start, could you? But you just, you just couldn't build on it. Well, I mean, it was a terrific start, yeah. Uh, John Hartson nearly scored, hit the bar before we did score a goal. But all, all told, it was a fantastic effort by the team. You know, they were, we're not used to that, that uh, type of football players, you know, who are top quality proven record in European football, won this competition two years ago and our efforts were fantastic. I'm really, really proud of the side and we're not out of this by a long shot. Are you disappointed not to have created more? Well, it's, it, listen, we're playing Liverpool, we're playing a top-class side, we've got a goal and, um, and uh, yeah, we've, uh, the goal, their equaliser led from uh, John Hartson being uh, adjudged uh, to have committed a foul. Phil has done very, very well, he's running into the, the field, you know, un unattended. But even so, but deep down, you could pick little instances here and there. Overall, I was, I was absolutely delighted with the commitment of the side. Just that we, we, um, we after their, their equalising goal, heads went down just for about five minutes, you know, give them possession of the ball. But uh, 
second half we get razzed again and uh, I was very pleased indeed I, I, we, we're still in this tie thanks for your time Mark pleasure Andy Walker with the questions there that's the Celtic viewpoint what about the Liverpool viewpoint John Helms with Jared Houllier John I'd imagine you're very relieved after the start you made to the evening <laughs> we didn't start uh, the way we wanted to start but uh, credit to the players because they came back with character they kept composure didn't lose the shape didn't chase the game and uh, which is exactly what we wanted them to do and uh, but it, I thought it was a very good game of football uh, a good good cap tie uh, two good sides and uh, I would say that the result is fair because um, um, I mean we, we had some time the ball possession and uh, sometimes they had I mean it, it, it was uh, a good encounter between two good sides really. people say you're halfway through the tie how would you assess the second oh, leg? oh well no it's just half time just half time of the uh, and you know we've got another 90 minutes if not more we'll see uh, uh, at Anfield but um, scoring a goal away from home is, is important thank you very much thank you very much well before we uh, talk about the football one instant to clear up Kenny this is uh, simply not on is it no he's going out in there they to catch the ball or if he carries any of his uh, momentum to come in and he's going down there we don't know what's been said he's going to make trouble though John it looks no, friendly he's, he's in big trouble you can't have he's that I haven't played in Spain for two years and have to suffer that spitting no not at all that's the disgrace really isn't it it's not not a Liverpool football club I've never seen that be a part of the Liverpool football club ever. okay we had a couple of nice goals to enjoy tonight though didn't we yeah so it's a shame it's slightly ruined uh, the end of it there but uh, yeah, Henry Larson, dream start, yeah, does what he does best. He gets to where you can score a goal. A man called John Aldridge once told me that, go where the defenders aren't, and uh, that's what he's done. And the ball ends up in the net. Yeah, and uh, it's the equaliser, great play by Reese. And a, a terrific strike from Henry Lesky, right across the face of goal, where, where the goalkeeper doesn't want to see a good finish. I think, I think, during the whole game, I think, too, if it looked a bit tired from the efforts on Saturday against um, Rangers. Big, big game from Saturday, I think tonight in the second half, they couldn't really push forward. Liverpool were in control, Henry had a wee chance, uh, did they get made a good save, but I think um, they looked a bit tired. And All right, thanks very much indeed. Uh, just to remind you before we go, our competition uh, tonight, which uh, we carry on until Sunday, uh, all you have to do is uh, answer this question. Great prize, by the way, it's a, it's a smart car. Which of the following former Liverpool players has not managed Celtic? A, Kenny Dalglish, B, John Barnes or C. Graham Soonest to enter you call 09069 Calls will cost you no more than one pound from a BT landline. Other networks may vary. Lines will close at 4.30 on Sunday. Right, uh, here's something to look forward to. That's tonight, Jonathan Pierce's Football Night with uh, guests, well, the boys here basically. Kenny and uh, Ray was with Jonathan earlier on. Full European Roundup tonight and an exclusive interview with David James, the England keeper. Right, this is one to look forward to, the CIS Insurance Cup final from Hampden Park. That's live and exclusive uh, on Sunday on 5. And uh, Kenny, well, we've been uh, spoiled a bit tonight, but that's, uh, that's good too, isn't it? You'll enjoy spoiled. that. When you've played in them, tell us what they're like. Uh, I'm not intelligent enough to <laughs> have the words in my vocabulary to explain how, how they are. It's a marvellous, marvellous occasion. When I mean, you walk out the tunnel and you see both sets of fans, and then Sunday will be split right down the middle. Um, your stomach's churning from it for about three days before the game, so marvellous occasion to look forward to. Okay, well we've all just about got time to get our breath back. Uh, Celtic haven't really. We'll see them, Rangers, and you I hope, on Sunday. Bye for now.